Good morning. <clears throat> Today is video number 24 of my set of 31 videos on how to use a glucose meter as a fuel gauge used with any diet, any style of eating. Just learning how to identify your personal hung glucose hunger trigger and making that your target to wait until before you take in new fuel. That's the whole idea of this thing. My morning fasted glucose was a bit high for me this morning at 89, but I know that's because of the food choices that I made yesterday at my Mahjong group when we shared a meal together. And But now it's a couple hours later and I've already reached my personal hunger trigger of 79. So yay for me. I was definitely not this metabolically flexible when I first began using a glucose meter as my fuel gauge four plus years ago, back in 2018. And um, yesterday when I was communicating with a lady via YouTube, I shared all of my morning fasting waking glucose numbers from when I started in 2018, and then I shared all of my morning fasting glucose numbers from this 30-day challenge that this video set is also targeted at, a 30-day data-driven fasting challenge that I'm participating in right now. And I'm a couple days ahead of the group trying to make these videos available to somebody that's new at this and wants a little I don't know, companionship as they go through this 30 day challenge. I will share my morning fasting glucose numbers, the back then and current numbers in the description box of this video. I'm putting up a screenshot of the whole 30 day challenge, the, the Excel sheet for it or the whatever sheet it's called to show you, um, the 30 days and what is sort of the topics for the or the sections for the 30 days and then you can see that um, today is day 23 so um, the videos up until now have covered days 1 through 22 and today's topic um, of day 23 um, I will put up a screenshot for that so you can see that is what is working well? And it says that we have covered a lot over the past three weeks. Hopefully you've learned about your metabolism and eating patterns by focusing on your biometric data to biohack your eating routine. So that uh, comes from the daily lesson. Each day of the 30 day challenge, there's a daily lesson that um, is emailed to us and we can also see on the um, optimizingnutrition.com group that we get to be a part of if we're in the paid challenge. Well, actually, people get to be in the optimizingnutrition.com platform for free and learn all this stuff for free by themselves if they want. But if they want to do this with a group, then they just pay $37 and it includes being sort of stepped through the 30 days with these lessons and also weekend uh, Zoom lives for question and answer time. So now I'll put back up the, the, the chart that shows all 30 days and the sections that are covered so that this little next blurb of the daily lesson will make sense. It says that in the coming week, which is the last week of this 30-day challenge, we want you to focus on consolidating the habits you have found most helpful or the sections that you've learned from that you found most helpful. The hunger training, the main meal versus discretionary meals, eating window, and meal skipping. And then there's some questions there to consider to ponder over. Um, so that comes from the daily lesson. My answer to which part of data-driven fasting 
I have found most useful for the entirety of the program is the hunger training section. <clears throat> and that begins, that section begins on day four of the challenge because the first three days of the challenge are dedicated to just putting in our, <clears throat> our pre-meal glucose numbers. We can put in other numbers if we want, other data that we want, but the key data to enter every single day of the challenge is our pre-meal numbers because that's the most useful piece of data to um, compile and use as a guide to um, what our personal hunger, our personal hunger trigger glucose value when we're ready to take in more fuel would be. And one of the key points during hunger training is, um, I'll put up a graphic for it here, that's part of the article on hunger training when that day begins, day four begins. Don't eat unless you're actually hungry. If you're actually hungry, eat protein. I think it should say prioritize protein because obviously we should eat other things, but um, prioritizing protein has been the other helpful thing to me to keep focusing on in both my Trim Healthy Mama life and my data driven fasting using a glucose meter as my hunger, as my fuel gauge um, practice. <clears throat> I searched the optimizing nutrition uh, group to see if there were any questions that might be useful for me to share with you in this video. And someone asked a question, is it normal for my hunger trigger to decrease every day during hunger training? So obviously that was happening to this person. And um, another person piped in with, mine has gone from 96 to 91. I am curious about this too. So one of our support crew members um, said, your new trigger is based on your average pre-meal blood glucose over the past seven days. The maximum your trigger will drop is equal to only 0.5% per day. However, if you're not able to meet your trigger consistently, it won't lower. You must be meeting or exceeding your trigger every day for it to lower. And uh, then Marty answered also, yes, that's normal for, for your hunger trigger to drop. It's based on the average of your pre-meal blood glucose numbers for the past week. Don't worry though, it will slow as it gets more challenging. So the point of having a personal hunger trigger or glucose value for ourselves that's based upon our own pre-meal glucose values that we enter into the Data Driven Fasting app is for us to have that data to decide whether we need to refuel or if we should forego that meal or snack that we were thinking about having. And the next thing that is shared in this article, in this daily lesson, when hunger training began, I think is important to reiterate. Finding the right balance. Your goal is in this phase, and I'd say in the whole program, is not to fast for days at a time. Extended fasting can cause people to make poorer food choices when they eat again. If your food choices tend to be poor because you are super hungry after a fast, it's a sign that you perhaps should have eaten sooner. And that's where the idea of prioritizing protein comes in and um, focusing on getting nutrients, so the non-starchy vegetables that have fiber um, are very useful to get familiar with. I'll put up uh, a graphic about non-starchy vegetable choices so you can just have a visual to, you know, get something in your mind of what that might be. Um, and then it goes on to say in this article, finding the right balance of feasting and fasting is a bit like learning to ride a surfboard or a bike. 
If you push it too far in either direction, you will fall off. It takes a little while to find the right balance, but in time it becomes effortless and intuitive through the guidance of your pre-meal blood glucose. Um, it says, as you wait for your trigger, you may need to skip snacks and stretch the time between meals. This will cause your blood sugar to drift down slowly. There's no need to be a hero. Recently, I heard Marty say, you don't go from zero to hero overnight. And that's a reference to people just pushing too hard, trying to get results too fast. It's not a good plan. I think this last section is worth sharing too. If your blood glucose is above your current trigger and you feel starving and you choose to eat, you may try to eat a little less, focusing on foods with a higher percentage of protein with less fuel coming from carbs and fats. After you log your blood glucose in the app, you will get suggestions on what to eat, i.e. have a normal meal, more protein, less energy from carbs and fat, or even to have a, a few more carbs to bring your blood sugar back up. And that would be if you've entered in a blood sugar that's kind of, it's quite, quite a few points below your personal hunger trigger. So each day we get these little daily lessons that we can use so we don't have to read the whole data-driven fasting manual at once. Um, most people don't choose to do that. And um, little bits of information at a time can be very helpful. I was looking in the group again uh, for other things to share that might be an encouragement. And someone said, I love getting feedback from the app when logging in my pre-meal glucose. It's like having my own private coach along for the ride. So cool. Yeah. I think this is another good thing to share. Marty is writing here about data-driven fasting. And he's saying, data-driven fasting is a first of its kind personalized approach to guide your daily eating routine using your internal fuel gauge, your blood glucose. Most popular fasting approaches prescribe a strict one size fits all pattern like 18-6 or 24 uh, alternate day or multi-day extended fasting. Unfortunately, without personalization, people only learn to ignore and push through their hunger often leading to poorer food choices and overeating when they are allowed to eat again. Instead of a fixed eating window, data-driven fasting uses your blood glucose value to make more intelligent choices about when and what to eat. Rather than ignoring your healthy appetite signals, data-driven fasting teaches you to train your hunger so in time your body learns to trust that you will give it precisely what it needs when it needs it. But the important thing is that when you're hungry, um, paying attention to that, and if you're truly hungry, going ahead and eating, prioritizing pr protein and nutrients, if you're above your per personal hunger trigger and you're feeling the need to eat. Um, and back to Trim Healthy Mama, that's where the fuel pull idea comes in, but depending on how many meals you're eating a day, you don't necessarily want to follow that guideline of keeping your protein grams down um, to what is recommended in Trim Healthy Mama. I, I have tweaked my Trim Healthy Mama life to be more in line with data-driven fasting and so I use the guidelines more loosely. Um, I still enjoy using the shakes and the sippers, but those I put with meals, especially the, you know, I know sippers are designed to be able to be sipped on between meals to keep, you know, the trim healthy mamas happy. But I don't think that's uh, a good Effect, it has a good effect on blood glucose. So I would have those things, those drinks, either right before a meal, as I'm preparing my meal, I know I'm gonna break fast and eat, or I would have it following my meal if I wanted it, 
or with it or whatever. Shakes, um, I might use those because of the protein that I could put in them to increase the protein I'm getting with my one or two meals a day. I'm still struggling to get in two meals a day consistently. Um, I don't know why that is my my issue, but it is. I'm I know that I like the convenience of one meal a day because I'm not having to prepare food twice a day. I prepare once a day. But um, anyway, I know that it would be probably healthier for me to break up that amount of food that I can consume in one meal into two meals so that I get more protein in each of those meals. Because at my age, at 61, I know that my protein intake is important to preserve my lean muscle mass. Which reminds me, I will stick a 14-minute um, YouTube video from Gabrielle Lyon in the um, description box where she teaches about the studies on protein and um, ages and stages in life and how we came to our protein values information. So anyway, that video was very helpful to me, so it's one that I continue to share. I've come to my tread desk to uh, make sure that I have all the information that I wanted to share put into the description box of this video. So the in the description box, you'll find a link about optimal glucose ranges and an article by Marty about understanding your unique metabolism. Then there's an article about metabolic flexibility, also from Marty. A, an article that explains how much do you need to increase your protein percentage to lose weight. And one about the difference between protein to energy ratio, the P to E ratio versus protein percentage. I said I was going to link Dr. Gabrielle Lyons' 14-minute uh, video um, about protein and the history and the science studies, what they show. There is a 10-minute interview clip with Marty and Ted Naiman discussing the protein leverage hypothesis. And then because I put up Ted Naiman's graphic about the low energy diet, which I still wrestle with that title because I think it's a turnoff. People are going to think, what? I want energy. <laughs> um, I put a link to where you can find that graphic and more explanation about his um, description of the low energy diet. Then I have included my morning fasting glucose readings from the first month that I was using a glucose meter as my personal fuel gauge back in 2018, all the way uh, through that first month. And then I have put this month's, which I guess I need to add today's 89 on there. Um, I have put this month's morning fasting glucose readings. I think I missed one or two readings in here where I just got up and started moving and forgot to take it. Oh, excuse me, I got a phone call here. All right, the last few things that I will include in the description box are a link to be able to use a free trial of the data-driven fasting app in case you happen to be watching this video and you um, are curious about that and you aren't connected to the data-driven fasting community in any sh way, shape, or form. There's no credit card required to use the, to access that free trial and begin using the app. It lets you use it for 14 days, which is long enough to um, discover your own personal glucose value as a hunger trigger and to have that time to practice with it, with it and to 
read the daily lessons and whatnot. Then there's a link to the free data-driven fasting manual, to the free data-driven fasting community, where all of the teaching material you could possibly want is there for the taking. Um, I've been sharing about the $37 group challenge that you can participate in, but it is def it's not a necessity, and Marty is very generous with his teaching. It's, it's all there free in the community. You just have to be motiva motivated enough to use it and walk yourself through it. <clears throat> There's a free data-driven fasting quick, gar quick start guide to know, to get a good overview of what this um, program, what the process is like. And because I've mentioned Trim Healthy Mama so much in the sets of, in this set of videos, it's the way that I like to eat, um, makes fuel separating really easy because of all the recipes available. And Trim Healthy Mama, recipes are widely available on the internet. There's lots of Facebook, there's lots of bloggers that share recipes and teach about Trim Healthy Mama. So um, very low barriers to be able to begin to incorporate these ideas into your life. And then finally, I've linked a five minute video where I was interviewed by Chantel Ray of Waste Away and she made a five minute video clip of that and it's available on YouTube so I've linked that at the bottom of the description box. This will be all for today's video and then I will hopefully, if, what is the saying? Sun, if the creek, if something with creek don't rise, whatever. I can't remember the saying. This is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching.